The work is very easy. Because we are always on a standby to get instruction. Sijaiwa mtu. Lakini nimewaiwa jambazi. It is always the worst nightmare for the National Intelligence Service. Instability in Kenya happening without their knowledge. Eject. Sakao must go. The recent protests have put these men and women on high alert, as the impact of the unrest was felt, but the force behind it remained unknown. This prompted the country's spy team to embark on a spree of arrests and abductions of individuals suspected of contributing to the protests. The tactics used by these presidential whisperers to extract information from those who unwittingly fell into their hands were experiences no one would want to endure. Victims of these abductions described their ordeal as involving psychological torture, physical abuse, and harassment. Is a threat. Yes. Open or. Yes. We shall break and. Yes. Okay. So, in fact, he then just opens the door, but before he could see something, they put something over his head and they zip lock his hands. Mm -hmm. So, when they come out, most are visibly very shaken. Mm. In fact, Dr. Austin had been kept for just a few hours, but he was highly shaken. And the first day, he was not willing to speak to anyone. Wow. One, he decided to go to the village. He just said he needs a time out. He doesn't want to talk to anyone. He thinks he'll be safe when mm. he's with his mother. So if they want to come and kill him, let At them least. kill him with his mother. So have you ever wondered who these men and women are who instill such fear in both the rich and the poor and what their role in Kenya is? In this episode, we will uncover known details about the National Intelligence Service and how they have managed to remain one of the country's most dreaded security organs. The death squad also includes an officer from the National Security and Intelligence Service. We pass the right information to the right soul for the right action to be taken against them. Do you believe that some of the intelligence that you and your officers may have gathered on high profile people has led to them being eliminated? Yes, of course. We've done it and that is why we are there. Formerly known as the Special Branch Department under the British administration in 1952, the NIS evolved into a powerful institution in the country. What makes them stand out is their operation in secrecy. In fact, the identities of its members remain unknown apart from their director who is their boss. They are responsible for knowing plans before they are executed and thwarting any threats before they materialize. To successfully carry out their tasks, they must remain incognito and camouflaged to hide their identity. In fact, members of this feared team could be your local mamamboga your next door neighbor, a shopkeeper, or even the cobbler you pass every day on your way to work. These field agents are found in every corner of the country, in churches, mosques, hospitals, university, and embedded within the security structure. Some are even on special missions outside Kenyan borders, forming the lifeblood of the agency. Field agents listen to conversations, work for years within new organizations, and meticulously record raw intelligence, which is then transported to the provincial intelligence heads. These heads inform Nairobi, where those stationed at the NIS headquarters sift through the information, transmitting only actionable intelligence data to specific institutions. The final recipient of this information is the director of the NIS, who then briefs the president of the country's situation in a morning call-up. The president receives state briefings from the director every morning, detailing how the country fared overnight and the current security situation. 
it is extremely hard to tell how the spy team enrolls its members. But rumors suggest that many come from the National Police Service. Commendations are typically made by the police bosses on candidates who can seamlessly fit into the spy team. These candidates then undergo rigorous training and vetting to ascertain their eligibility to join the NIS. Candidates undergo a series of rigorous physical and psychological tests to assess their suitability for the demanding tasks ahead. Recruits for the National Intelligence Service NIS must complete a grueling selection process before induction. Now, this process includes the infamous Hell Week, renowned for being one of the toughest in the world. Now, this extreme level of difficulty is due to the fact that all candidates are already seasoned officers, each trained to be a specialist in their field, honing their skills to perfection. Out of every 100 candidates, fewer than 1% pass the selection process and training. Those who are selected are typically the best in both theoretical knowledge and field performance. After selection, candidates undergo additional months of intense, tear-inducing training before they are accepted into the NIS. It is important to note that NIS training is not a one-time event. It is an ongoing process that continues throughout an officer's career. They regularly participate in advanced training courses, attend seminars and workshops, and stay up to date with the latest tactics and technologies in the field of counterterrorism. Now, officers are deployed to three key divisions based on their areas of specialization. Number one, internal division, which is responsible for gathering domestic intelligence. Number two, external division, which is also responsible for gathering foreign intelligence. Number three, counterintelligence, that is responsible for performing counterintelligence operations. Additionally, other divisions necessary for the proper and efficient performance of the service functions may be created by the Director General in accordance with the NIS Act of 2012. Now, being a member of the NIS comes with a significant sacrifice, including the potential risk of death. Residents of the coastal city came in their numbers to pay their last respect to Ali Abude, an intelligence officer whose life was cut short by a known assailant who pumped at least nine bullets in his lifeless body. The NIS Act imposes restrictions on certain rights and fundamental freedoms guaranteed by the Constitution. Some limitations apply to all persons in Kenya, while others specifically affect members of the service. Firstly, in the interests of national security, public safety, public order, public morality, or public health, the NIS Act restricts the freedom of expression for its members, as guaranteed by Article 33 of the Kenyan Constitution. This restriction also prevents the disclosure of information received in confidence. Secondly, the NIS Act limits political rights, prohibiting members from forming, joining, participating in activities, campaigning for political parties or causes, or recruiting for political parties. Now, members are also barred from serving in positions such as Member of Parliament, the Senate, a county assembly or any other political body. However, NIS members are permitted to register as voters and participate in elections, by elections or referendums. This might imply an expectation of impartiality or presumption that NIS members will remain apolitical. Thirdly, a member's freedom of movement and residence can be restricted in the interest of national security. This includes prohibiting them from leaving Kenya, requiring them to stay in designated areas for training or to secure the performance of their duties. The social and economic rights of NIS members may be curtailed as necessary for intelligence training and operations. Additionally, 
the right to fair labor practices is limited as members are prohibited from forming, joining or participating in trade unions or going on strikes to maintain good order and discipline within the service. NIS officers are also forbidden from assembling, demonstrating, picketing or petitioning public authorities except to maintain good order and discipline within the service. Despite the National Intelligence Service NIS successfully maintaining national security from both internal and external threats, it has not been free from controversy. Since its inception, the NIS has been labeled as the government's hit squad, allegedly used by key officials to eliminate individuals perceived as threats to their stability. During President Daniel Moy's era, the NIS under the leadership of James Kanyotu was notorious for instilling fear among those who opposed the president. Here, your testicles are tied, you are, you are hit. <laughs> My friend, you know, I can't nail them because pain belongs to the bearer. Tortures were conducted in Nyati House where the special branch had its offices. Now, Nyati House gained infamy as the headquarters of the special branch now known as the NIS with James Kanyotu Kenya's longest serving spy chief who passed away in 2008 at the helm. The agency gathered intelligence on individuals and groups threatening national security, reporting directly to President Moi at that time. It also provided vetting services and collected foreign intelligence on matters of national importance. We really asked him to apologize to the nation. Even through the Truth and Justice uh, TJRC, to apologize. In fact, what he said this was not an apology. People say that he apologized. No, he didn't. To fully understand the significance of Nyadi House and understand the experiences of those detained there, one must consider its role during the second liberation led by the university students in the 1970s and 1980s. Following the murder of J.M. Karioki in 1975, student activism surged and Nyadi House, which opened in the early 80s, became a symbol of fear. In the second liberation, many people died in this place from 24th and 25th floor. People would be tortured up there, people would be beaten up there, people would be abused up there, and when they continued resisting, they would be thrown from 25th floor. And then it is said somebody had come up there to commit suicide. Prominent figures who were seen as threats to Moi's regime, such as Raila Odinga, Koigi Wawamwere, Professor Michele Mugo, and many others endured the harsh conditions of Nyati House. In his book, The Flame of Freedom, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga details the torture he suffered in Nyayo House at that time. Over six successful days, he was interrogated on the roof threatened with death and confined in a black cell where he was beaten for about 30 minutes by officers. Now officers struck him all over, kicked him in the groin and hit him on the back of his head using whips and pieces of tire rubber. He was kept in his underwear in a watertight cell filled with cold water up to his knees described as an imaginable torture. Odinga's frequent use of a handkerchief to wipe his eyes is as a result of the permanent injuries he sustained from these tortures. Surprisingly, no special branch officer was held accountable for the atrocities committed. Similarly, there were no mechanisms for victims to seek redress. 
The state covered up these violations and has yet to undertake any investigations or prosecutions of the special branch officers involved in the atrocities. In his book, I Refuse to Die, Koigi Wawamwere recounts his harrowing experience in Nyayo House. The cell were completely dark. When the door opened, a little light came in and revealed four walls painted black. Only one white button stood on the wall near the door. The cell had a thick layer of dust that smelt foul. I felt hard crusts on the floor that turned out to be dry human excreta. In one corner near the ceiling, there was a glass-covered light that was never lit. Nearby, a powerful fan blew both cold and hot air alternately. When it was blowing cold, the cell was like a deep freezer. When it blew hot air, it was like an oven. In the recent protest, the National Intelligence Service NIS was also accused of abducting influential people on Twitter who were perceived as the coordinators of the protest. The NIS moved to arrest and detain these individuals in Comunicado for hours stemmed from their disbelief that peaceful protesters were not being funded or led by any politician. To the NIS, it seemed impossible that legions of youths could spontaneously gather and challenge President Ruto's government without a leader. This led the NIS to target vocal social media influencers, abduct them, and forcefully extract information from them. Many individuals, including Gabriel Oguda, Osamu Otero, and Regina experienced the terror of the NIS as they searched for protest sponsors. So, okay, Lisa, what's your phone password? Nika pay password ya simu. Actually, look at Villa Lin Shukisha Kagari, look at me switch off. So, we let you in Yakagari out, do a ka switch on a canicha pin ya sim card, a canicha password, a can embass on. I want to clean your phone. Nika Muzo does clean mean. Akaniambia, you don't worry, just relax. So me, I sat down. Nika relax, tukaanza kuenda. Nikaanza kuapigisha story because me, I was so tense. And nilikuwa nikinyamaza na shikuwa na panic attack. And then the one time when I shikuwa na panic attack, even nika try kubuta blindfold. Wali nisukuma hivi chini ya kiti waka nikanyagia kicho hapo. Like, unona hapo yu nafasi between the co-pilot, the co-driver's seat and the person who seated new mayake. Wakanifinya kicho hapo chini akanikanyaga hapo akanza do you want to travel this way nikaambia no akanza utatulia nikamwambia yes so akanambia okay sit up nikaambia like i'm really tense and if i to kikat kimenyamaza um nitashinda nitashinda kupata panic attacks and then we'll keep on relieving this so i'd rather to pick a story so tukakuja me actually my my kidnappers were very nice Tulipiga story na wao, nika wachapia story za university, story za rotary act, story za life, tukongelea kusu relationships. Eh, so, I have a question. I have a question yeah. for you. Were you hurt? Were you hurt? No, bad it nafika. Hold on. Okay. Yes, I was hurt eventually. So we, we got to the place where they were taking me. Walipiga hon, nika sikia giti mefunguliwa, tuka ingia. I was handed over to someone else. Ni jumwenye alikuwa amenishikilia alinipea na kwa mtu mwingine aliniwachilia nikasikia mtu mwingine amenishika and then nikaingizwa somewhere. I went up a flight of stairs. Nilikuwa nazunguka. I don't know. I think they were intentionally zungushering me and then taking me up a flight of stairs ndio nikai confused ni sijui kwenye niko. I was taken to a room and then someone started interrogating me. They wanted to know who's funding everything that we are doing. They wanted to know who's mobilizing people. And I told them, Hakuna mtu wana mobilize watu. Like, we literally just talk about it and people show up. There's no one mobilizing. There's no one uh, funding us. There's no one who's doing anything. Wakaniambia, they're going to stay with my devices. And wataka, waonekama, whatever I have told them is true. I asked them, kama nitaenda home, wakaniambia, you know, where well, you just relax, we'll, we'll let you know. And you see, sasa, I was thinking, maybe they've seen like, seven days of protest when I end up pick out people from different regions and what I could cripple here seven days of protest. So me, I didn't know, Atta, it's in relation to, I didn't know, 
because I am until this moment they haven't told me for sure. So after many interrogate, nikasikia nime nikaingizwa kwa another room and then it was locked and then the place was silent. So see me nikaka nikaanza kuita na excuse me, excuse me no one was responding. I removed the blindfold. At that point walikuwa wamenitoa handcuffs so akaniweka zip locks. Nikatoa hiyo blindfold, nika check, nika knock mlango no one was responding because ni mlango ya chosen na mlango ya chosen the lock ilikuwa na lock side ya ndani sawa so, tu lock nje nikiwa ndani naweza fungua i unlocked nikatoka nikaona it's a ha- i was in a house i went to the room where i got interrogated nikaona it's just a desk and chairs nothing else nikashuka the stairs nikaona like it's a very big house i don't know ilikuwa iko up exactly because it's surrounded by trees nikaje kufungua mlango nikapata iko locked so I was trying to find a way out. Ndio nikiwa kwa dirisha niko na mtu anapita. So mimi nika see maybe they took me to an Airbnb and left me there you know just to try to destabilize me. Mtu huyo mtu mwenye alipita sasa si nika knock dirisha nikasema unaweza nifungulia. Kumbe it's some it's the cops. <clears throat> na alikuwa Javan niyo. Hiyo time alikuwa Javan bala clava and me I wasn't blindfolded. So he got really pissed. Akaamba unafanya nini hapa? Rudi uko juu. Unafanya nini hapa? I ran back to the toilet I went and locked myself and I put my blindfold on ndio sasa akakuja huko ndani wakiwa wakanifuata huko they came two of them wakiwa wamevaiza mabala clava wakanitoa blindfold yangu alikuwa amekuja na gun and a rungu and a whip ndio sasa hapo ndio wakanichapa mgongo na the whip I still have wounds on my back and then he told me wewe unafanya mchezo No, una, una, ulikuwa unatoka ukienda wapi? Umeona nini uko nje? Naomba I haven't seen anything I promise you because now me I'm thinking if they know that I have seen them they're gonna try to like end me or Yeah, so and na nikona hiyo gana hapo nikajua you know this is my last day. This is it for me. Akaniambia niketi chini kwa floor na nikunje miguu like I pull my clothes my legs up to my knees ndio akaanza kunipiga magoti na the rungu thing akinitandika kwa mg- the other guy akinitandika kwa mgongo and then they at- at- tied my hands because i had been tied in front they untied them wakafungia na nyuma na wakakaza i told them it's hurting me akaniambia well si ulikuwa na kimbele mbele unataka kutembea wacha tu immobilize immobilize and wakaniacha hapo waka lock mlango tena wakaenda so me i sat there for up until around 9 ndio nikakuja nikatolewa nikapeleka kwa another room there was a mattress and a blanket and the windows zilikuwa zime kwa plywood imenailiwa every window in that room so ulikuwa uweziona nje kuko so dark you can't even tell what time it is uh, and then i was blindfolded the, the entire time there was there nilikuwa nakanikiwa blindfolded na mimi hata nilikuwa naogopa kuitoa just in case wakiwa waingie nikiwa si anticipate alafu nipate macho imefunguka one ni kama nimeona decide kuni dush dush eh uh, so they kept on coming and i realized what did you see when you went down stairs what did you see me i told them i just saw trees and a green wall i didn't see anything else i said so do you know who's talking to you i told them no i can say are you okay i told them okay yeah i'm okay so can i'm this is where you're gonna sleep we'll proceed tomorrow and don't worry no one is gonna touch you you'll be safe here and i went to sleep asubuhi Mm. Walikuwa nasikiza classic FM sana. Hiyo ndio kitu nakumbuka. They were listening to classic FM the entire time na sauti ilikuwa very walikuwa wameka sauti nyingi sana inakuwa kama you're in the neighborhood you can't hear anything else that's going in there going on in there because of how loud the music was. So in the morning uh nikaleta wa breakfast mama nikate mbili and tea. And then afterwards they they came for me and took me back to that room where i was interrogated remember the, the entire time i'm, I'm blindfolded yes sasa this guy tells me and it was chairman he works for the state he doesn't talk for the politi- for any political party yeah his interests are in the states and everything is he's doing is to ensure that the country is safe and that's why i am there nikamuliza makosa yangu exactly ni gani I can remember you're doing a good job but now you're not understanding that paid politicians are infiltrating your space and they are you know watering down your efforts and they're putting the uh, the country at risk. Nikauliza so what exactly is it that I have done that's wrong? Yenye mimi nifanya nikaletwa hapa. Akaniambia you just use your your social media platforms wisely. 
Ndiyo sasa akaanza kuniuliza maswali. He asked me about Kimuzi. They had gone through my messages, my Twitter DMs. Alikuwa anafungua DM kwa DM akiniuliza so who's um who's Kimuzi? How do you No, he didn't ask me about Kimuzi. Aliuliza kuhusu Osama, Osama Otero. Nikamwambia wewe ni bully, wewe ni bully. Akaniuliza kuhusu uh, Polo Kimani. I told him I have never spoken to Polo Kimani. And a couple of other people wenye mimi siwajui. And then sasa ikafika point ya Kimuzi akaniambia and I see here Kimuzi sent you money. How do you know Kimuzi? Nikamwambia we just know each other from Twitter. There's a time he was he had planted waruz and I connected him to my mom because my mom buys waruz. And that's how to lead Juana. We don't know each other beyond Twitter. Akaniuliza na mbona alikutumia pesa? Nikamwambia the money was for water for the protest. Akaniambia you know I know Kimuzi he's my very good friend. Si anaishi Australia. Nikamwambia I don't know kwenye anaishi. Akasema ni shuko Australia ama ni Israel. I told them I have no clue kwenye anaishi. Me I just know that he sent me money for water and that seat. There's nothing else. So he now started asking me information about everyone who was part of the protest in who was organizing the protest in Nyeri. Ah uh, wakaingia kwa WhatsApp wakachukua majina za admins wa hiyo group. Hiyo group ya Occupy Nyeri they took their numbers and their names and and I think that was it kwa hizo interrogations. At some point they left the room kuka chakara hapo ndio akaanza kunipigisha story ananiambia you know I even follow you on twitter i normally see your tweets nikamwambia so you understand there's little there's nothing that i have said that out of pocket akaniambia mimi nakuelewa mbona unafanya chini unafanya lakini sisi hatuwezi wa join but una understand mbona unafanya and the cycle of corruption is never going to end until the police are paid well and you see they're never going to get paid well if this is the government that we have so uh, itakuwa whatever you guys are doing it's right na conversation ikaisha hapo nikakuja tena nikachukuliwa nikarudishwa kwa room nikiwa kwa room a guy came in he was wearing a balaclava he was tall dark ameunga kidogo ako na mwili yeye tuseme ni mzito kwa mwili akaja akaninyo akanikalisha chini ananiambia and you know was, at that time i was crying because I'm asking people if I'm going home no one is responding. Na mimi nimeshaona vile Jacob Juma kina vile everyone else amefanyia mwenye anakuwa abducted kwa barabara. So me I just knew my fate was sealed. Akakuja ananiambia he found me crying. So he told me stop crying. Nikamuuliza what is it that I'm doing here? You know you guys have gone through my phone. Hamjapata anything. Many interrogate my story has been the same since yesterday. So what is what else do you guys want? Kama ni kuniua you know just, let's just get it over with badala ya nikae tu nikiwa tense every time akaniambia you know me I'm a Gen Z like you I understand you and I'm here for you you're going to remember me for the rest of your life because I'm going to take care of you unaona hata nimesema upatiwe nyumba and suite because they put me in a room that has a toilet and a bathroom uh, a bathroom and they were giving me food me nikamwambia all this doesn't matter if I don't have my food me I just want to go back home there's nothing I have done and i'm not leading this protest there's no one who's leading this protest it's just people showing up sadam kinieka life inaendelea tu mimi ni atini niende home akaniambia i'm going to take care of you so they brought me supplies my sabuni ya kuoga food toothbrush toothpaste they told me to shower nikainikiwa msafi jo nilikuwa nimekataa kuoga naambia mimi nataka kwenda home wakaniambia nioge i go into record kwa nilipea kila kitu ya kuoga mimi ndio nimekataa kuoga And so I got ready I I showered nika brush meno nika kula na nikaingia kwa mattress yangu nikalala ndio sasa mtu akakuja akaniambia I kneel I faced the wall and I kneel down I did that wakanifunga kichwa niniyo blindfold na wakanitoa eh tukio huko kwa tukitoka nikapewa maziwa and then chairman ndo akaniambia say so told you I'm gonna take you home so here I am naenda kukupeleka nyumbani na ujue I am monitoring you I know all your details jo liko na details za my parents wako na details za my boyfriend and where he stays and where he works and what he does wako na details zangu and yeah yeah akani tukaingia kwa gari nika blindfolded akaenda wakaniambia they're gonna drop me somewhere that's in the middle of nowhere but they tell me where I am and they gave they told me they're gonna give me money to go home ndio ni understand kuwa they are not the enemy they're just working for the state same way we were working for the state and nika drop you i don't know where it was i just know it was a rear push nikachukua nduzi i think 
five minutes from Mali ni Shukishiwa niliona place ni ta the oak ama silver oak i don't know it was just oak something and uh walienda kanishukisha wali nishukisha hapo and then they told they gave me a thousand bob alafu kaniambia ni sisahau his called chairman he'll be finding me soon and in whatever i do i remember vile nilichukuliwa and it's going to keep on happening and i'm not the only one who has been taken many more to come Hey, yeah, I took and do the, I came home and that's my story. Also I need text after nimefika kwa nyumba kaniambia nimeacha laptop yangu but I have my laptop so she could respond but that's that so far. Sorry about the situation. I hope to not uh, many of us will go, we'll have to experience that again. Somebody else. Now, despite this controversy, the NIS plays a critical role in safeguarding Kenya's national security and interest. Despite numerous challenges such as insufficient funding and inadequate infrastructure, the NIS has made significant progress in recent years. It has improved its coordination with other security and intelligence agencies, enhanced its technology and data analytics capabilities, and expanded its international partnerships to encounter or counter emerging threats.